Hey guys, it's Jeff, and today we're making beef Wellington. So Beef Wellington is definitely one of my favorite Sunday dinners. Um, always a crowd pleaser if you've got people over and you want to impress them. Uh, today I'm gonna to show you how to nail it. Uh, every time, first time, every time, uh, we're gonna cook it out on the Kamado Joe behind me. Uh, we're going to use a thermometer to measure the internal temperature to make sure it's done perfect. Um, what else? What else am I gonna do? Oh, we're gonna do a red wine jus. Ooh, a cheeky little red wine jus to pour over the top. So first we need to prepare the mushrooms. We're gonna put those in the food processor to blitz them up, uh, called duxel, if anyone really cares what the proper term for it is, but blah, blah, blah. Uh, mushrooms in the food processor, a little bit of thyme, a little bit of oregano, which isn't traditional, but I like it and I got it in the garden behind me and I wanna use it, um, and a touch of garlic. So let's get on with that. Um, mushrooms. I've got 500 grams of, um, what the fuck, man? What? Sorry. Sorry, nothing. What are you laughing at? You, you, you need a haircut. You need a haircut. I, no, I need a haircut. I've been in lockdown. Okay. What do you want me to well, do? Well, we all have been in lockdown. Well, but... Give me an ISO haircut tonight. Okay. And then, all right. Fuck, I don't know. Anyway. Mm. All right, okay. Tootsie. All right, Tootsie. No, I think I feel like I've got something in my fist. I've said it before, I hate my life. All right, I've got 500, <laughs> shut up. I've got 500 grams of mushies here. I've got a mix of plain old boring uh, buttons and some lovely Swiss browns. And um, we're gonna pulse those in the Pulsar. food processor. Uh, so let's do that. I've got some um, oregano and thyme from the garden. We'll just pop those in. And you just want to... Oh, it smells amazing. Fuck. <laughs> it helps if you plug in the right thing, right? Um, and you just want to pulse them. You want them to kind of... cut sort of small pebble size. So we'll just pulse, pulse. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's great. So see how that's, see how that's basically tiny little small kind of pebbles, I guess. Then when we uh, fry that down, that'll reduce down even more and the water will come out of it and blah, blah, blah. So that's that. That's about as far as we need to go with it. Uh, so next what we need to do is just dice finely uh, one onion and we'll get that frying. Uh, a couple cloves of garlic. <laughs> and then in with our mushroom mix. And basically what we need to do with this is just cook this down. The water will start to come out of it and then the water will start to dry away and it will become a little bit drier. And then that's when we're done. Um, we don't want the mushrooms that have any moisture in them um, because otherwise that sweats into the pastry and then the pastry goes soggy and that's good enough. So we just need to monitor this over the course of the next eight to 10 minutes or so. So you can see that water now starting to come out of those mushrooms. And what we need to do is, um, as I said, just wait until that kind of dries up and the mushrooms start to dry away again, and then we're good to go. Okay, so you can see that these have started to dry up now. There's no more water coming out of them, and they're sort of coming to a much kind of drier consistency. Uh, so we need to set this aside now and let it cool. 
um, and then we can start to put together our Wellington. So let's crack on with the beef. Okay, so we've got a beef tenderloin that's been pre-prepared by the butcher, center cut, uh, Chateau Briand. Uh, so this has been pretty well cleaned up. There's a couple of little small bits like this we've got to take off. And we've got this silver skin, which is essentially inedible, completely inedible. So we need to take that off. Really what we need to do is just cut a strip. Actually, I've got that the wrong way around. Go like that, and sometimes that, and it is pulling straight off like that. I hate it when there's a little flap left and it doesn't want to come off. Oh, there you go again. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone who hasn't seen the last two videos won't really understand that joke, but. Okay, <laughs> they can go back and watch them. That's a good advertisement. There's a lot of flap discussion. It's awesome. All right, so that's basically that. Um, that's okay. That's just a little bit of fat. And the other side's pretty much bang on. So I reckon we're good here. Uh, so season it with salt and pepper all over. Um, so now we need to sear off our beef. So get a pan nice and hot. A touch of olive oil in. Okay, beef in. That's the sound you want to hear. I'm looking for a nice crust all over. What we need to do before we set this aside is just brush with mustard. Um, best to brush it while it's still a little bit warm, um, so it kind of soaks into the beef a little bit. And you want to get that on all sides. So the beef's seared off, uh, mustard on. That's tucked away in the fridge, cooling down as well. Uh, once that's ready to go, we can put together the tenderloin, which through the magic of time, I'm just gonna say that that's ready and we're gonna do it right now. So let's go. I've got some cling film that I've laid down here and I'm just laying down some uh, Serrano ham, Parma ham. Uh, prosciutto, um, whatever you got. Um, it just needs to be laid slightly overlapping one another and big enough, uh, obviously long enough that you can roll the tenderloin up in it um, and also wide enough that it completely covers it. Uh, it does two things, obviously it's delicious, but it also um, prevents the juices, the resting juices from the steak from leaking into the pastry and making it soggy. Mm -hmm. So that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So just like that. So our mushrooms have cooled, that goes on next. And so what we need to do is just basically spoon this on. And you kind of want it a couple of millimeters thick. Not the easiest stuff to work with, but you kind of get the hang of it. That smells so good. I could just eat this out of a bowl. Okay, so tenderloin on. And what we want to do is pick up the cling film. Pick up the cling film and roll that over. Like that. Careful not to get the cling film caught in it. So I roll that like that. And then in. And then what we want to do is just grab here and do the old twist and roll technique, similar to when we're making roulade. Well, 
We're gonna pop that in the fridge for about 15 minutes uh, to let that kind of set and make a nice formed roll. And then we'll come back and pop it in the pastry. He always sits there and watches the video. <laughs> okay, so we pulled our um, wrapped beef from the fridge. It's nice and chilled. Um, I've got some um, uh, puff pastry that I pre-prepared here. One strong tip, if you're using pre-packaged um, puff pastry, you probably need more than one sheet to get this done. So you may need to roll them together, which is what I've done here. I've actually rolled four sheets together because um, the stuff that I had was quite small. And that's so, just so you have a smooth finish. So it doesn't yeah, so like what you need is you together. need to make sure that you've got enough, because you can always cut it, but you need to make sure you've got enough length here and enough width here to completely seal it, which we've definitely got plenty of. Okay, so egg wash, we wanna wash very thinly um, all over. Obviously, so our pastry sticks. And we need to just roll this guy up. Dust off our flour. Just like that. Nice. And that's about as much as we need. Got some flour under here, but we just dust that off as we go. That's it. So just give that a little cut. So we've got we've got enough to crimp up here, so we just want to cut off the absolute excess and we'll fold that in. Same on the other side. Just like that. Brush our flour off. Get your fork and press that down. On the other side. Beautiful. And then, and then we just just make sure you press this this end in. Beautiful. Uh, a little bit of egg wash. Well, the kids are screaming in the background, but that's pretty standard for our videos, right? And the cat sprinting, and the kids sprinting. It's just all a joy. And then get a... You're going to Jeff the Chef? Jeff the Chef, you reckon? Just... Oh, that's pretty. Carve some little oh. things with the doors slamming in the background. Thanks for looking after him, Bella. Oh, look at that, Jeff. I thought you said you were better at this than me. I never said it's better than what I would do. It's just that you've done a bit of research, bless. Now you've left a little corner without any pattern. Mm. Nice work, looks great. There we go, looks great. Um, the last thing you need to do, um, and makes a big difference, is some lovely flaky salt on top. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it just enhances the crust. It makes it very lovely. Very, very lovely. Okay, stop. Very, very lovely. Very lovely. Okay. We're off to the Camado with our beef Wellington. Let's go. All right. This guy behind me is up to temperature. We're cooking today at 220 degrees Celsius or 400 and something Fahrenheit. I'm going to put that on the screen because I can't remember the measurements. Why isn't everyone using metric? Nowadays, like legit imperial, it's just no good. It's, it's no good. Anyway, uh, let's get this going. And we are ready to put this baby on. I've got the pizza sewn set up here, spacer above, and we're going to put that on with some greaseproof paper just on there, like that. And we'll just insert our thermometer into the thickest part. Just put that straight in there. And we're gonna set that for 50 degrees Celsius and we'll pull that off. Um, and essentially, because the pastry it acts really like an oven, um, it will come up probably about five degrees Celsius as it rests, which means it'll give us a beautiful medium rare, which is what we're looking for. And I know that because I screwed up my first couple of Wellingtons not realizing that it comes up that far because sometimes we all make mistakes, so blah, blah. Very rarely for you though. Very, well. 
I can't believe I just admitted that. Mm. Anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so now I'm going to pour some wine and we'll be back when this is done. Fading light here in Melbourne. We're ready. We've hit 50 degrees Celsius, so we'll get this guy out of here. And I'm a massive dick, and when I put my little artwork on, I split the bloody pastry, but we'll be fine. And I didn't get anything to pull this out. There we go. Alright, so we'll get our pizza here on there. We'll get this guy inside and let it rest for a short period. Beautiful. Okay, this has turned out really good. You can see the pastry is very crispy, except for the... Uh, sometimes I just outdo myself and... Fuck well, up. well, I fucked it. I split the pastry, but that's fine. <laughs> so we just cut a little... Slice. Here. And then Make sure you're straight, G, not on the diagonal. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Excellent. So that was uh, delicious. Um, I think the best thing was the addition of the herbs into the duxelle. Um, the herbiness of the mushrooms really kind of kind of comes out in it, which um, was an absolute stunner. I think. What do you reckon? You know, so unbelievable! It stood out. Yeah. It was really um, delicious. And what I found is cooking it on the Kamado. Actually, I didn't get it on video, but um, actually gave it a. Or, or have we got some on the leftovers? Maybe gave it a little bit of. I mean, it's gone a bit soggy now, but you can see it's. Um, Given it a bit of a candied crust on the bottom, which was kind of a really, a really uh, the bit you fight for, <laughs> the bit everybody fought yeah. for, which was which was interesting because it's the first time I've cooked it on the Kamado and not in an <laughs> oven, um, and uh, super happy. It was a great uh, a great outcome. So um, yeah, awesome. Have you got anything that you would like to say? Do you want to go on camera? No. Do you want me to take the camera? And... Yeah. Stop but... asking. I'm the, the elusive camera person. Okay, let's uh, let's go now to our to our outro, which I pre-recorded about four hours ago. <laughs> and the sauce we used on tonight's video is a red wine jus. Um, if you go back to my uh, lamb rack video probably about a month or so ago, uh, the recipe for that is on there. The only difference being tonight we use the uh, pan juices that were left from searing the beef uh, rather than using the chicken wings that we used in that particular video but if you head back to that you'll get the recipe for that thanks for watching guys we really appreciate it um, if you like the video please like and subscribe and share it with everybody you could possibly know um, liking and subscribing obviously really helps us out a lot so we greatly appreciate it uh, next one I think we're either cooking a maybe a steak dinner or a tomahawk maybe Tomahawk? I keep teasing Tomahawk, but I haven't gotten around to it yet because, well, see, a lot of the dinners that we prepare here, Yazo vetoes, and uh, I don't feel like meat again, Jeff, and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, we'll get there. Um, it'll be one of those two, I think. Anyway, uh, thanks again, and we'll see you again soon. See ya.